There are at least three ways to build most EDH decks. Strong! Da. Fun! Fun! And mean. Let's look at the strong, fun, and mean ways that I would build AC, Tyrant of Gyre Straight, and the video starts right now. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fanfight series. Link in the description below. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel or Magic. I am Joel. We're going to cover AC, Tyrant of Gyre Straight, and the three ways that I would build this commander. But first, if you would, go down there, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you like the video by the end of it. Really helps us out more than you can know. Let's jump over into this commander. AC Tyrant of Gyre Straight comes out of the Commander Legends pre-con decks. One blue, one green, four other for a legendary Serpent 5-5. Five, five. You can play an additional land on each of your turns, and whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. We've got two very strong colors in blue and green. We've got a little bit of a landfall thing that we could lean into, a little bit of a mana ramp thing that we could look at, and it's a Serpent, so we could have some fun with some really big creatures. The three ways that I would build AC Tyrant of Gyre Straight. Strong way, I would lean into the landfall and go with a lot of cards that are going to take advantage of that since we will hopefully have two landfall triggers most turns after AC is out. The fun way I would go Serpent Tribal and look at Leviathans, Krakens, Octopuses and see how many big creatures we can fit in one deck reasonably. And for the mean way I would go big mana and ramp out to some gigantic stuff that's just going to take over the game. Let's look at the strong way. As we look at the strong landfall way, the first card that I want to put in here is Tatiova Benthic Druid. Tatiova wasn't in the pre-con, but it's a very similar card to AC, and so redundancy is very much a good thing. A blue, a green, and three other for a 3-3 Druid Merfolk. Whenever a land enters a battlefield under your control, draw a card, gain a life. Straight up, let's just have some redundancy on the effect so that other stuff that's leaning into the commander will have more help there. We can also run cards like Retreat to Coral Helm, a blue and two other for an enchantment. We're in blue and we're looking at landfall cards, and I think this card is actually pretty good. Whenever a land enters a battlefield under your control, choose one. Most often I would say we're going to be choosing scry one to make sure that whatever we want on top is there. Or we can, in a pinch, if we've got a big attacking line and we just need some specific creatures tapped down so we can swing, tap or untap target creature. We can also look at Zendikar's Royal. This is just passively giving essentially our battlefield landfall abilities. This one has a landfall of whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 2-2 green elemental creature token. We're just getting extra value off of the lands coming into play. Rampaging Bailoths is actually in the pre-con of this deck, but I just think it's fantastic and it represents exactly what we're doing on a bigger scale. Whenever land enters a battlefield under your control, create a 4-4 green beast token. That's nothing to shake a stick at. We can also go a little harder. Royal Elemental. 3 blue 3 for a 3-2 elemental flyer whenever a land enters a battlefield under your control. You can gain control of target creature for as long as you control Royal Elemental. So if you can protect it, you're going to be able to steal some stuff. Corsair of Crewfix is just a fantastic card that fits perfectly into this strategy. We'll be able to play lands off the top of our library and so if we're playing additional lands on each of our turns we're able to dig down into our deck and find our most powerful cards two green one other for a two four centaur play with the top card of your library revealed and you can play the top card of your library if it's a land card whenever a land enters a battlefield under your control gain one life so it's just got a little bit of all of it and if you want to spend upwards of like 30 bucks when i shot this one green three other for oracle of moldaya this is just a fantastic card two two elf shaman you can play an additional land on each of your turns play with the top card of your library revealed you can play cards from the top of your library so it combines some of those abilities all into one card it is a 2-2 but it's still very very strong we should run tireless tracker it doesn't say landfall but look at that text whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control investigate whenever you sacrifice a clue put a plus one plus one counter on tireless tracker so our lands are going to create these artifacts that we can play pay two to sacrifice and draw a card plus grow tireless tireless tracker as we do this. So we're gaining cards into our hand, our creatures getting bigger, 
and we've just got more residual effects of the landfall ability. Trade Routes is a card that I came across when I was building this deck. A blue and one other for an enchantment. It says pay one, return target land you control to its owner's hand, and then pay another one, discard a land card from your hand to draw a card. So if we get towards the end of the game and we've just got a ton of lands, we don't really need all of them anymore, we can bounce them back to our hand and draw a card for just two mana. That's a pretty good trade-off for the back end of a deck that's going to be playing a ton of lands already. Speaking of lands, you're going to want to spend some time looking at what lands are in your deck. There's going to be a lot of utility lands that are very much going to help you, and you should run specifically Field of the Dead. This is a $20, $30 card at the time of shooting, but this is a fantastic one because when it or another land enters the battlefield under your control, if you control seven or more lands with different names, you create a 2-2 zombie. So it just kind of builds on itself to be residually creating tokens, and it's on a land, so it's really hard for your opponents to deal with. Get you some ram spells, get you some of these landfall cards, and really take advantage of doing something that you would be doing naturally over the course of playing a game anyway. That's the strong way that I would build it. Let's look at the fun way. So this card sort of encapsulates the entire fun way to a T. That text, Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, and Serpents you control can't be blocked, except by Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, and Serpents. If we've just got these two creatures on the battlefield, we have 11 damage that can't be blocked as long as our opponents don't control any of those four creature types. This is fantastic. It can be used as a finisher. It can be used to get the damage train rolling. I would definitely run Serpent of Yawning Depths in your Leviathan Big Sea Creatures deck. We should also run deep sea crack and we really don't care that it costs 10 to cast this thing because we should suspend it for nine we're going to pay three mana we're going to put nine suspension counters on it and whenever an opponent casts a spell if it's suspended we're removing time counters from it in addition to removing those time counters at the beginning of our turn we will eventually get to a six six that can't be blocked and we don't have to spend mana on it really because we've already spent the three and we suspended it so that it could come in essentially for free pro lake ancient is a seven cost six seven it's got flash and i really like that especially that it can't be countered it does have prowess which is it's okay it's not going to give us a huge boost of damage for a already six seven very powerful creature but that returning three lands you control to the owner's hand to return pro like ancient to its owner's hand this is exactly what i love about this creature this is going to give us some avoidance give us some protection on the pro like ancient and it's going to play with our landfall strategy if we choose to go that route because we're going to be able to return the lands to our hand and get their etbs again if we so choose storm surge kraken is one i talked about in my upgrades video for ac tyrant of gyre straight i think that this is a fantastic one. It's a hexproof 5-5 five, five for 5, and it's got lieutenant, so as long as you control your commander, the Kraken gets plus 2, plus 2, and has whenever it becomes blocked, you draw 2 cards. So it's either going to get through and deal 7 damage, or you're going to get to draw 2 cards. Pretty good payoff either way, and you should be happy with it. Inkwell Leviathan is an expensive card, but it's a 7-11 with Island, Walk, and Trample, and Shroud, so it can't be targeted. It's going to trample over anything that can block it, and most often, it's not going to be able to be blocked locked at least if they're running blue in their deck. Now, speaking of unable to be blocked, let's run Deep Channel Mentor so that all of our gigantic creatures, we have this line full of leviathans, deep sea creature, giant whales and octopuses and such. Let's make them all unblockable. This is a late drop so that you can make them all unblockable once you already have this whole line of creatures. And I would say this is what you drop right before you're gonna go for a kill blow to try and finish the game out. You can also use cards like Thassa of God of the Sea to get you there. For three mana, you get a five, five industry it doesn't become a creature until your devotion is equal to five or higher. At the beginning of your upkeep, you passively get to scry one and that bottom ability. Two mana, target creature you control can't be blocked this turn. If we're going to be playing giant creatures, let's make them unblockable. We can also do that through Archetype of Imagination. Two blue, four other for a three two. Creatures you control have flying. Creatures your opponents control lose flying and can't have or gain flying. So all of our serpents and leviathans and octopuses suddenly take to the skies while all of their creatures are trapped on the ground it's horrifying and it'll win you a game that's the fun way that i would build this let's look at the mean way the mean way is all about having a lot of lands. Scape Shift is a way to start getting there. It's a way to go get some of those utility lands that we talked about out of your deck and onto the battlefield by just sacrificing like a basic land. You can go and get any land. Sack any number of lands for four mana, sorcery speed. Search your library for up to that many land cards. Put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. If you run something like that in tandem with Splendid Reclamation, a green and three other for a sorcery, return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped, 
we're going to have a battlefield full of lands and we will have gone and gotten exactly what lands we want out of our deck and onto the battlefield we could also run boundless realms for seven mana you search your library for up to x basic land cards where x is the number of lands you already control and you put them onto the battlefield tapped we're going to double our lands if we have only basic lands on the battlefield already we're running a two color deck so there should be more basic lands in it i would say than a normal three or four color deck would have for sure but boundless realms is going to go get us a lot of lands regardless and it puts them right onto the battlefield so it's not even bringing them into our hands now i want to look at freed from the real because i'm talking about big mana and there are a lot of ways in blue and green six ways to be specific that we can go infinite mana with freed from the real so what freed from the real is it is an enchantment aura it goes on a creature for three mana for one blue you can tap enchanted creature or also for one blue you can untap enchanted creature so if you have a creature that creates at least two mana and at least one of those two mana is blue you can go infinite with freed from the real by tapping the creature for the two mana using the blue to untap enchanted creature and then you do it again do it again do it again do it again so let's look at the six creatures creatures that you can go infinite with with freed from the real in blue and green you've got bloom tender for each color among permanents you control add one mana of that color to your mana pool so if we've got a permanent on the battlefield or two permanents on the battlefield that represent green and represent blue we already have bloom tender so really we only need a blue permanent on the battlefield it'll be able to tap for two one of those is a blue if freed from the real is on bloom tender we can create infinite mana same thing with moldiah channelers that bottom ability as long as the top card of your library is a land moldiah channelers has tap add two mana of any one color to your mana pool so we would just infinitely add two blue mana untap untap retap untap retap and that's just kind of how we go a rick smithies is a card that you should probably be running in the deck anyway because it is a kraken but it's got that ability to tap for a green and a blue so we can infinitely add mana to our mana pool if freed from the real is on this creature gyre engineer straight up adds a green and a blue that's exactly what we're looking for out of freed from the real our Gothian Elder is a four cost two, two. It does say untap two target lands. So if at least one of those lands taps for blue mana, it achieves the same goal. If freed from the real is on our Gothian Elder, you tap the two lands, you tap our Gothian Elder, you use one of the blue mana to untap our Gothian Elder, you untap two lands, you go, 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 and you've got infinite mana. And lastly, we've got Crows and Restore. You have to have Threshold, but Crows and Restore will tap to untap up to three target lands and do something very similar to the Argothian Elder. With Freed from the Real, we'll be able to go infinite and create infinite mana. So we've got a lot of lands on the battlefield, or we've got a Freed from the Real combo going and we're creating infinite mana. Why? For what? Let's run cards like Omniscience. Huge spells. 10 mana. You can cast spells from your hand without paying their mana cost. As long as you can keep your hand full, Omniscience is going to allow you just to cast ad infinitum Jenga Taxis Court Augur 10 mana it's a flashing 5-4 at the beginning of your instep you draw 7 cards and each opponent's maximum hand size is reduced by 7 so they don't get any cards and we get to refill our hand at the end of every turn we can also run Big Daddy Kozilek 10 mana for a 12-12 if you cast the spell draw 4 cards it's got Annihilator 4 so it's going to destroy 4 things of the opponent's choice whenever it attacks and if it's put into the graveyard from anywhere, Sonar shuffles it into the library. We also might as well run old Ulamog, 10 mana, 10, 10. When you cast it, exile two target permanents. It's got indestructible, and when it attacks, defending player exiles the top 20 cards of his or her library. But we don't just have to play big creatures. We've got infinite mana. Let's make our line infinitely big. Finale of Devastation. Use two green and then pump infinite amounts of mana into the X. Search your library and or graveyard for a creature card with cmc x or less put it on the battlefield you search your library this way shuffle it if x is 10 or more creatures you control get plus infinity and plus infinity and gain haste until end of turn this is your finisher if you can make infinite mana and you can cast finale of devastation you should win the game right then and there as long as you got what three creatures you need one to attack each each uh, opponent walking ballista is also another way pump infinite mana into walking ballista and if this card resolves you're going to be able to remove the one one counter off of it an infinite amount of them in response to anything that could happen to it unless they've got like split second or they're stopping the stack somehow walking ballista is going to be able to win you the game if it can resolve and you've cast it for infinite amount that's the strong fun and mean ways that i would build ac tyrant of gyre straight let's close the book 
Thanks so much for watching. Like I said, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you like the video and it helped you out at all. It really helps us out if you do. If you want to support us further, we have a Patreon. Link is down in the description below. On your way out, let me know in the comments what cards you've put into AC Tyrant of Gyre Strait or what strategy you think is going to be the best for this commander. Other than that, I'm tapped out and I'll catch you later.